Hey everybody, today we're going to take a look at the swing state polling that dropped yesterday from Morning Console. But we're going to try the sensationalized video title this time just to see if it brings in any more views. So let's get right into it. It says two weeks out, neither Trump nor Harris have a notable swing state advantage. And as we get into it, consider the usual advice that it's just one poll from one pollster. Take a look at the cross tabs, the sample sizes, the weighting. Some people like this pollster, some people hate them. At the end of this, we're going to take a look at their track record from the 2020 election. So let's see what the key takeaways ways are. Harris holds slight advantages among likely voters in Michigan, Pennsylvania, and Nevada, while Trump has minor edges in Georgia and North Carolina. Along with identical levels of support in Arizona and Wisconsin, the results from all seven states are within the survey's margins of error. Now let's get down into the seven battlegrounds. Now I'm not personally saying I prefer this pollster or I don't. I'm just here to present some comprehensive swing state data and let you be the judge. So in Arizona, we've got it tied at 49. Last month, Harris was up three. And at the bottom, this indicates with likely voters. In Georgia, Trump has taken a two-point lead, 50 to 48. Last month, it was tied at 49. In Michigan, Harris is up by four, 50 to 46. Last month, she was up by three, and that's way down from the 11-point lead she held back in July. In Nevada, Harris is up by one, 49 to 48. That's way down from the seven-point advantage she had last month. In North Carolina, Trump is up by two, 50 to 48. That's the exact inverse of what it was a month ago. In Pennsylvania, Harris is up two, 50 to 48. Last Last month, she was up by five. And in Wisconsin, it's dead even at 48. Last month, Harris was up by three. So as most people expect, this is going to be a close race. I've seen some of the early voting data. I get it. It looks like Republicans are doing better in a lot of places. I've also seen some Democrats projecting confidence that some of their metrics are looking pretty favorable on their side. Both sides are going to want to project confidence. And the polls can only take you so far. They could easily be off by two, three, maybe even four or five points. Technically could go in either direction. Now, if these polls are spot on, then nobody's really going to win this thing because we've got a couple of ties. So down below it says no candidate has a clear advantage. I think we already knew that, but it's good to see that there's not really any extreme outliers. If Harris was up maybe 11 in one of the Rust Belt states, or if Trump was up by 7 or 8 in Nevada, that would be a red flag. Now down here, we've got some candidate attributes. These are the shares of likely voters in swing states who said the following traits best described Trump or Harris. For too old, it's going to be just over 50% for Trump. Harris Harris is way down there at only five. And now with Biden out of the race, Trump is the old guy. But Trump still seems way younger than Biden, even though it's actually only by a few years. That's going to be one where she has a clear advantage. How about dangerous? Well, Trump here is just under 50%. He's at 49. That's not a good thing. But Harris is still pulling in over one third. She's at 35%. For mentally fit, Harris is at 48%. Trump is at 34. That one's going to also favor Harris. Just like with Honest, she's at 44. Trump is at 34. For cares about someone like me. It's an eight-point advantage for Harris, 46 to 38. The one where Trump is going to outshine Harris is going to be on experienced. He's at 47, she's at 39. So just based on these, it would look like Harris should have a more clear advantage. It's not the case, so these attributes tend to actually not matter all that much. Next, we've got shares of swing state likely voters who are going to vote for or against a given candidate. For all swing states among Harris supporters, 73% are voting for her. 27% are voting against Trump. For Trump supporters, 82% are voting for Trump. 18% are voting against Harris. Now, in all these states, there's a similar gap. And for whatever reason, the widest gap on here is going to be in Wisconsin. Only 61% of Harris supporters are coming out for her. A big 39% are coming out against Trump. So maybe the sample size is off. Down here, we could see they used at least 420 likely voters in each state, up to a plus or minus five point margin of error. So just based on this, Harris's support in Wisconsin is a little bit lower, but she's benefiting by having some voters come out and vote against Trump. And the last section here is going to be whom swing state likely voters think will win the November election. With those likely voters, it's very close, but Harris has the slight edge, 45 to 41. 13% don't know or have no opinion. With Harris backers, 83% think she's going to win. With Trump backers, it's 79% think he's going to win. So does that really mean anything? I don't think so. Both candidates under 50% and only leading by a few points here, I don't think is statistically significant. Now, before we get to the polling accuracy at Morning Consult, let's also take one more glance at who voters trust on key issues. So with taxes, it looks like Harris has just slightly eked ahead of Trump, but they're both right at about 46%. This does go back to October of last year, but with that particular issue, at least in this poll, Harris has closed the gap. At interest rates, she's also narrowed the gap, but Trump still has a lead, 47 to 42. At housing costs, Trump did have a lead, but Harris has eclipsed him. She's now leading by 5, 48 to 43. With cost of everyday goods, that one's close, but Trump has the advantage 
Advantage 48 to 46. On healthcare costs, Harris is up by 9, 51 to 42. And on gas prices, it's the opposite. Trump leads by 9, 50 to 41. So those are some of the issues. Now let's see what Morning Consult's track record was back in 2020. So they've got 14 states here. And let's go through them one by one. In Arizona, their final poll, they had Biden up by two points. In the end, he won by less than a half a point. So they overestimated Biden's support, but it wasn't by anything too significant. In Colorado, it's not at all a swing state, but they had Biden up by 13. He actually won by 13 and a half. So for this state, great job for Morning Consult. They were spot on. Unfortunately for them, the way that state was going to vote was not at all in question. In Florida, they had Biden winning by six points, but did that happen? Not at all. Trump actually won it by closer to three and a half points. So in that state, that is an absolute wipeout. That's more than a nine point miss and it's completely useless. How about Georgia? They had Biden up by two points. He carried the state, but it was by less than a half a point. So like Arizona, a slight overestimation of Biden's support, but not too terrible. And they got the result right. They even have Indiana on here, like Colorado, not at all a swing state. And they had Trump winning by 11. He actually won by 16. So a five point miss on an uncompetitive state. I'm going to say that's below average, but it's not the worst. Next, we've got the blue wall state of Michigan. Here they had Biden up by seven. This one, he won by under three points. So that's a four point miss in favor of Biden. We've definitely seen worse, but that's not a great poll. In Minnesota, Biden was up by nine points. He actually won it by about seven. So not bad here. A little bit of an underestimation of Trump's support. In Missouri, they had the opposite of Minnesota. They had Trump up by nine. Trump actually won it by more than 15. So greater than six point miss, that's pretty bad. The only silver lining is that that's not a competitive state. How about North Carolina? They had Biden up by one. Trump actually won it by close to one and a half points. So they weren't off by a ton, but they did get the wrong result. In Ohio, they had Trump up by three. He actually won it by eight. Another five point miss. That accuracy is going to be weak. Let's do Pennsylvania. Biden was up by nine. He won it by just over one point. So that's another substantial miss in a state that was considered a battleground. What else can you say except that's disappointing? In South Carolina, Trump was up by seven. He won the state by more than 11 and a half. So a bit of a miss there, but not one of the worst polls. In Texas, they had it tied at 48. Trump won it by over five and a half. That's another clear underestimation of Trump's support. And finally, they've got Wisconsin with Biden ahead by 13 points. He went on to win the state by a half a point. So depending on how you want to look at it, that's either a 12 and a half point overestimation of support for Biden or a 12 and a half point underestimation of support for Trump. However you want to frame it, there's no other way to spin the comment than this result. They completely blew it beyond description here. This is an embarrassing, disgusting polling error. And this isn't some safe red or blue state like Hawaii or Arkansas. Wisconsin was right in there as one of the notable battlegrounds. They did get the result right, but just barely so. This is four years after 2016, where the polling famously underestimated Trump. So whatever adjustments they made, almost nothing panned out. And almost all of these states have more than 1,000 in their sample size. But for whatever reason, Wisconsin is the worst of all the states. And I get it, there was a pandemic, it was a unique election, but these are supposed to be the professionals who have all the data to avoid making the completely laughable mistakes. I'm all for cutting slack in either direction, but this looks like it's much more of a pattern and it's in one direction. Now you can take this two ways. You can either say they have zero credibility and you're not going to believe a word they say for the upcoming election, or you can say they were terrible in this election, but maybe they've made a few adjustments and they might be a lot closer this time. I do think they're going to have to be fairly accurate to start to regain some of the trust of the public. And I can understand thinking that their current polling may be underestimating Trump at least by a little bit. Maybe it's only by one point. But even if that's the case, then Trump may end up sweeping all seven states. People were burned by the polling in 16 and 20. They always want to think Trump is going to be underestimated now. That definitely might be the case. Or things could be different this time. We'll have to find out. But that's where we're at on this poll for Morning Consult. So let me know in the comments, what do you think about the current polling? Do you agree that it's basically even across all the battlegrounds? And what do you think about their polling accuracy in 2020? Does that make you think they have no credibility and you think Trump is ahead by two, three, four, five points in some of these states? Or do you think they've maybe overcorrected and it's going to be Harris that's underestimated this time? Let me know down below on your way out. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe and join if you'd like to support the channel. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.